Hello everyone, welcome to the class today. This is Abby here again. We're going to continue our conversation this time about globalization. English globalization, an interesting topic for sure. I'm sure many of you have a lot to say about it, seeing that you're all learning English. So go ahead and click on the join class button if you'd like to join. If you're a premium member, you can join now. Hi, premium member Mohammed. How are you today? Hi. Do you hear me? Yes, I can hear you perfectly. How are you? Okay. I'm fine. Thank you. How are you? I might have an issue. One second here. I'm doing very good. Sorry, I was having a bit of an audio issue there. Mohammed, where are you from? I'm from France. Oh, very good. Excellent. So you speak French. Do you speak any other languages? Sorry? Do you speak any other languages besides French and English? French, English, uh, England, and uh, Arabic. Arabic. Awesome. Very nice to have you in class, Mohammed. Thank you. Have I had you before? I'm sorry. I I I listening my voice and your voice. It's so strange. <laughs> okay. You know what you can do is close your verbling window. Close the verbling window. Close the window. Help? Yeah. The verbling window. Yes. Okay. I'm going okay. to try that. That yeah. will help take away the echo. Oh, he's gone. Hi, Sergio. Welcome back. Sergio's gone. <laughs> if you are not a premium member, you should be able to join at any moment. So go ahead and click the join class button to be able to do so. I closed the wrong window. Oh, he closed the wrong window. Oh. I hope, hopefully he's able to come back. Hi, hey, Igor. Welcome back. Yes, hi. I see you? you have uh, a new kafura, how to say. A new what? Uh, hairstyle. No. I don't. No? <laughs> no, it's just it's it's just it up in a bun. Okay. <laughs> it's the same as always. Um but uh, the banker is here. <laughs> oh, this looks familiar. It looks like the exact same class as my last hour. <laughs> okay. Can everybody hear me, or is my is my sound still a little bit robotic? No, your sound is safe, or your image is a little blurry. Blurry. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay, though. Yeah. 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 Okay. We Let's can. see if this maybe this will help. Not sure. Welcome everyone to the class. Looks like we have a few new ones. Hey Tiago, how are you? Hey Abby, how are you doing? Very good. Long time. Oh uh, yeah, indeed. So, have but been, yep. Have you been keeping busy? Oh yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and maybe my boss is gonna blast on me, but I'll take my chances. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm addicted to verbally. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, oh, you're taking, actually, yeah. You're taking classes with all those papers stacked up behind you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Way better now. <laughs> Very good. You have a new picture, too. Very cool. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> good to How see you. How are you doing? I'm very good. Thank you. Very good. Okay, it's been a, a busy morning, but it's been good, so that's good. Okay. That's good. And hi, Sergio. Welcome back. How are you? Sergio? Silva, maybe your microphone is muted. Because I can't hear you. <laughs> okay. Osama. Yeah, hello. Que tal? Hello, How's Chico. it going? Muy, uh, uh, very good, yeah. <laughs> I tricked you. I was about to ask in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I tricked you. 
Yeah. It's nice because when I took I took a Spanish class the other day and I got to experience verbling from your point of view. That was very exciting. Yeah, <laughs> very nice classes. Yeah. It was nice to see you. Thanks for coming in. Yeah. Hi, Monsif. Welcome back. Hi. Mina, Mina, how's it going? Hey, Miss Abby, Miss Abby, I'm great. How are you doing? Pretty good. We've gone from um, UFC slash bodybuilder slash model shots to Disney. <laughs> what happened to your picture? <laughs> from the big <laughs> muscles to a duck. Wow, what a change. Yeah. What's going on? It says me talking to me. <laughs> no, to the duck. Yes. We are talking to the duck. No, he's saying that his picture is a duck saying, you talking to me? Talk to the hand. <laughs> Mina, it's, <laughs> Mina, it's a very cute picture. It's a very nice picture of the duck. Thanks a lot. Hi, Michael. Michael, Hi, teacher. Hi, Hi, teacher. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I'm Michele. I'm from Italia. Michele? Yeah. Nice to meet you. Thanks for coming in. Nice to meet you too, teacher. From Italia. From Italy. Yes. Very nice. Italy, yes. Italia. Thank you for coming in. Igor is back. Very happy about that. Calvin. Hey, Abby. Is that your girlfriend in the green hair? I can't really see the picture. Me or? I see a I see a tiny little picture and a girl has long. It looks like blue hair. Oh, that, that that's my girlfriend. What's her name? Emily. Emily, very nice. Thank you. And then Adam, welcome back to the class. Hi, how are you? I became an addict too, <laughs> of verbally. <laughs> we have the disappearing banker. Oh yeah. You're not allowed to disappear today, Adam. Well, it's out of my hand, actually. It's uh, the connection. Believe me, I know all about connection issues with verbling. No <laughs> problem. I completely yeah. understand. Yeah. So, today we're going to talk about English globalization. Who can give me an idea of what that is? Who can give me an idea? What is English globalization? What does that mean? English language spreading around the world. It's like it a begin, disease. Begin, uh, began uh, as an international language. A global language. Famous. Global language. Why do you think English has become a global language? Uh, can I answer? Yeah, of course. I guess that's because uh, the economic United States, you know, uh, now, the uh, United States is the leader of uh, stronger and economic and soldier, you know. Mm -hmm. That's Definitely. all. Definitely. And uh, other countries, they want to find job because of uh, the factories. In other countries, like in Morocco, there is a lot of uh, uh, factories, United States factories. And so, people, if they want to find job or work in this corporation, they have to be excellent in English. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, right? So, um, yeah, I hear that as well, Tiago. If, if you have background noise, you know what, I was actually thinking about this, and when everybody has their, their microphones muted, it's too quiet. <laughs> I don't like it. So if you don't have any background noise and you're in a quiet place, then you can feel free to leave your microphone on. But when there's a lot of background noise, it can be really distracting for the class, okay? So if that's your cat crying, stop torturing the cat, okay? Very good. What language do you speak at home? Osama, what language do you speak at home with your family? At home, I speak uh, Arabic with my family and my friends. And uh, in verb lane, I speak English. Yeah. Very good. And Spanish sometimes, I've heard you. Yeah, I Spanish, Portuguese, Italian. Yeah, I'm a polyglot. I speak uh, so many languages. My next goal is Portuguese. Portuguese, so. keep on. 
você vai uh, você vai gostar de português. You better be careful, porque Tiago can correct you on that. Ah, <laughs> sim. We do have a Portuguese Thiago, speaker with us. Fala aí bom, né? Bom, muito bom. <laughs> Obrigado. Very good. You speak very What well. Ah, oh, thank you, man. Thank you. <laughs> Now, when did you start to learn English, Michele? Sorry, teacher. Can you repeat it, please? When did you start to learn English? When did you start your studies? So, I started to study when I were in school, when I was a child. But I was a very lazy student, <laughs> and that's why I'm verbally now. That's why, because you were a what student? Sorry. I was a a lazy student. A lazy. And that, yeah, <laughs> and that's why I'm now in on verbling. Do you now feel regret for being a lazy student? Sorry. Do you, you feel repeat? regret for being a lazy student? Yes, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> that's yes. how I feel about French. Because now I have to study harder. Yeah, exactly. It's a lot of work later. If I was a good student in school, then I would have been speaking French fluently by now, but I don't. I don't speak French. So I know how you feel. But I'll ask you, Calvin, what language do you speak at home? I speak Chinese, Mandarin. To be And what about now, with the family that you are staying with, what language do you speak with them? Oh, um, my family is in China right now because uh, I'm an overseas student. I'm alone in the United Kingdom. I speak. Okay. Yeah, but I do speak Chinese with them. Very good. I, I assume that maybe you lived with a family. I'm sorry. That you live by yourself. I live in a dorm. Okay. In the dorm yeah. room. Very good. Well, that's very good. Now, the next question I want to ask you is number three on the first page of our document. Maybe someone could read question number three for us. Perhaps we could get Igor to do that. Do you ever mix your native language with English when you are speaking? No? Only a few words from English. Uh, for example, OK, maybe, and uh, another short words that are, that are common used in conversation, maybe. But, right, uh, OK. No? You don't ever, you don't, you're not ever speaking and the English word might pop into your brain and you say the English word instead of your native language word? No, only okay maybe and uh, some, some word that uh, uh, spread it uh, around the world, the English word. So, for example, like uh, McDonald's, uh, but exist another words in English. Uh, now I can't uh, tell what words, but I know that okay. exists. I see what Such you words. mean. I think for me, because I live in a country that is Spanish, I'll often be speaking English and a Spanish word will come out. But that's probably different because I'm surrounded by it all the time, right? Yes, because English is your native language. Yeah, but I'm, I'm talking about Spanish being my second language. Sometimes it happens to me in Spanish. Okay. Okay? Excellent. What about number four? Osama, could you read number four? Number four, yeah. the questions. Num yeah, question number four in on the document. How many people around the world do you think speak English as a second language? What do you think? Do I have to answer the question? Um. Yeah, what's your like? What's your guess? Your opinion? Obviously, you don't have an exact number, but what do you think? I think uh, English now is the uh, is a second language in a uh, in a lot of language in a lot of countries in the world. I don't have an exact estimation, but but I think it's the second language in so many uh, countries. Very good. Yeah, that's true. It um, seems to be the language that everybody wants to learn. That's true, right? What's the population right now? Who has a general idea of what the population of the globe is? Seven Six, billion. Uh, seven billion, I guess. Seven billion. 
So out of 7 billion, how many do you think speak English, at least One. at the level that you want to? 1 billion, I think. 1 billion? 3. Uh, <laughs> 2 billion, I guess. 2 billion. Hopefully this yeah. article has the answer for us, because we've got some very drastic differences in our answers, right? It depends at what level they speak English. Uh, for example, like me or more proficient. <laughs> so with, uh, here we can uh, d d divide at what level. Okay, very good. Well, your level is very good, Igor. Everybody in this class can speak pretty good English, right? So probably quite a few can speak at, at this level, right? What about number five? Tiago, could you read number five? Yeah, sure. Um, have you ever heard the term Spanglish or Hanglish? What do you think these terms mean? Yeah, I've heard Spanglish. Uh, sometimes you can have radios, for example, um, in California, that the guys are speaking in English and they change to Spanish, like, Welcome to the JFT and Bienvenidos aquí a California. The weather is so hot in here and it's crazy, something like that, you know. Yeah, okay, that's a good example for sure. They kind of switch back and forth from one to the other, right? Yeah. Why do you think they do that? What do you think has happened to their brains that they are doing that? The other, right? Yeah. Why do you think they do that? What do you think has happened to their What do you think, Tiago? I, I beg your pardon? I just heard uh, an echo. In the... Yeah, I sorry, <laughs> I, I muted that. I think it's actually... Um, Monsi, if you have a little bit of an echo, I'm not sure if it's because you have another window open or if you're not using headphones. I'm not sure. Can you repeat your question, Abby? Mm -hmm. I'm not talking. I have uh, muted my mic. Okay, thank you. Maybe it was somebody else. It could have been my bad. Tiago, what do you think makes somebody do that? Speak Spanglish. What do you think is going on in their brain? Um, sometimes they might live in their communities, so they use more Spanish than English and or their own language, native language, mm -hmm. or uh, they have to use English in a context they got to work or something like that, but they're not that proficient in the proficient in the language, so maybe so, or sometimes they just uh, have uh, similar terms, so I don't know. Very good, yeah, I would totally agree with you, that's probably why. Sometimes I speak Spanglish. What about Hinglish? Who's ever heard of that before? Hinglish. Hinglish? Hindu and English? Hinglish. Yeah. Hinglish is a mixture between Hindi and English. Yeah, I've never yeah. heard that before, ever. Yeah, Hinglish. Miss me, Kelly. Yes. What do you think? What should we call a mixture of English and Italian? If Spanish and English is in, is Spanglish, and Hindi and English is Hinglish, what's Italian and English? <laughs> Italiano. So sorry. English is macaronico. <laughs> what? It's, it's. <laughs> we call this English is macaronico. Oh, okay, I think we're going to call it Italian. Yeah. I like Italian. the <laughs> What about German and English? Then what? Jerglish. 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 <laughs> German. Or Calvin, what about Chinese England. and English? Chinglish. <laughs> Chinglish. Chinglish. <laughs> English Chin. So we get the idea, and, right? Uh, yeah, languages. and Arabic. Arabic and English. Araglish. <laughs> <laughs> or Aragland. Fantastic. Very good. I'm just going to introduce Amit. Amit, are you there? Amit, can you hear us? He's frozen. He's frozen. Yeah, he looks very mm -hmm. spiffy in his suit and his tie. <laughs> Okay, let's continue with our lesson. What is the meaning of globalization? We already covered that. So let's go ahead and get into our reading, okay? Who would like to read paragraph one? I'm frozen? No. Okay, who would like to read paragraph one? Okay. 
today the uh, today the English language is spoken as a second language by more people than ever before in uh, 2006 for every native English speaker there were estimated to be three non-native English speakers Wow so what are the what's the ratio here what kind of stats do we have three to one three to one excellent that's exactly yeah, how you would say it three to one awesome what's an estimate so Prediction. Forecast. A forecast. Very good. That's a good yeah, word yeah. for it. What? A, what's to another predict. word? Predict. Predict. Or prediction. Anything else? An average. Average. Yeah, that could forecast. definitely apply. What was that, Mina? Forecast. Absolutely right. So we know what an estimate is. So we're not a hundred percent sure on a specific number, but we have a pretty good general idea, right? That's an estimate. Paragraph number two. Maybe we could get Michele to read that for us. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Sorry, I thought it was for a English is now the language of business, computer technology, and skilled employment worldwide. Currently, hundreds of millions of people especially in China and India, are learning to speak English. Many of them in small local language schools. Experts predict that 3 billion people will speak English as a second language by 2016. Excellent. Very good. So why are countries like India and China especially interested in learning English? What's your opinion, Mina? Because, for example, when I'm studying uh, networking, my book is 1,000 pages in English. So I have to study it in English. So one of those reasons would definitely be for study, right? Yes. Yeah. Any, any other reasons? To make, uh, you know, friendship with... My, with uh, uh, People from all, all over the country, the world, you know, make a relationships. Friendships from around the globe. That's a good Yeah, one. but I think people uh, from India, they are learning English as a second language because they want to get a better job. And also because all the materials available to learn uh, computer science are in English. So, the, so English is a must for them to learn. Excellent. Very good. That's probably another good reason. Better jobs, friendships from around the globe. That's an interesting one, Mina. Who thinks that um, learning English helps them get friends from around the globe? Who agrees with that? Yeah, we will agree. It's a good reason. Diego, why, why do you say to protect yourself? Um. <laughs> well, I was just wondering about uh, wars, you know, but not specifically English, uh, the language of your enemy, right? So to get your enemy straight, you must know his culture, his language, and everything else, you know. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, okay. and, yeah and also uh, for people that uh, want to, uh, to travel to other countries, so they, they must know the language if they want to have a, a good trip. <laughs> that's, that's true. Travel makes travel easier. Yeah. Right? yeah. What are some things that you can do while traveling if you speak the language that you would not be able to do if you did not speak the language? For example, to bargain in the market. <laughs> bargain. Yeah. Bargain. Very good. Yeah, that's one thing you can do. Do you, do you often have to bargain in English countries? <laughs> no. <laughs> that's, why I, that's why I had to learn Spanish, right? <laughs> <laughs> but there's, hey, usually there's no bargaining in, in Canada yeah. or the United in States. In supermarkets. <laughs> yeah, the supermarket, they would the just price, like, Yeah, the prices the price. are fixed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly, right? So Very good. No what other reasons? What other things could you do that you would not be able to do if you didn't speak the, the language of English? To speak with native population of that uh, country where you go. Very good. What kind of things can you learn if you can speak to them? 
All kinds. You can ask all kinds of questions and they will answer. Give me an example, Igor, of a question that you would ask if you go to the United States and you meet somebody. Give me an example of a question you would ask them. Where is the safest, safest place to live for me? In my trip, for example. Excellent. So you're asking for advice. That's a yeah, good yes. one. The cheapest hotel. <laughs> The cheapest uh, taxi, the cheapest uh, <laughs> food, the cheapest... <laughs> How to get the best prices. Yes. Awesome, very good. Diego, Where tell me you and also, yeah, also, uh, if we are in United States, for example, and we saw a, uh, a gorgeous girl in the street, and we want to talk, so if we don't know English, so we, we are going to miss this opportunity, no? Osama, what would you say to that girl? Without scaring her, you don't want to scare her away. What would you say yeah. to her? Yeah, uh, I would say to her, uh, uh, could you give me five minutes? I want to talk with you because I, I think you are gorgeous and I must know you. But I feel scared. I feel scared. No. Too much. <laughs> no, it's you normal. Need, In my country, it's it normal. Down. You gotta tone it down, Osama. You have to be a little bit more inconspicuous. Maybe, maybe I can give her a flower while I speak. Oh. You're, you're watching a lot of movies. Canadian girls are terrified. Yeah. Anything you'll say, you might take against you. Sorry? Tell, tell her her rights, you know? Read her rights. Yeah. Her rights? Yes, like, like when you're arresting someone. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's uh, normal. It's normal in United right States. It's straight. forbidden only in the Arabic countries. In Arabic countries, you can't approach a girl on the street. But in the United <laughs> States, it's normal. Yeah. Exactly, right? So you could yeah. do that, Osama. And it might work. It might yeah. work, depending how smooth you are. If you're really smooth, then maybe. You've got a chance. Yeah. <laughs> Tiago, what were you going yeah. to tell us? You said you had a story. Oh, yeah. Uh, when I visited Quebec, and uh, people over there, they really don't like to speak English. And there was that girl, she was the guide, and she was talking English in the middle of uh, the street. And there was that guy, he just shouted at her, you know. But... I know French. I don't speak, but I understand. And he said uh, something like, uh, "Shut." Okay, I'm not gonna say that. Uh, Shut yeah, the yeah. f <laughs> up, you know. Beep, so, beep. and she was so embarrassed, but nobody got it. I did, but you know, it was not a big deal. But yeah, they really don't like to speak English over there, as I could see, you know. Yeah. So. That was a very, uh, I think, uh, terrible experience. I have a cracked French, but, you know, I communicate. But for, yeah. you know, I don't know if you have been over there, but uh, you can tell us better than I. Oh, yeah, I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> How was it? Um, I experienced similar things that you did, for sure. Because I do speak a little bit of French, so to me, like... Um, it would be the most respectful thing to do to try to speak that person's language, even though you don't speak it perfectly, right? But yeah. they didn't like that I was trying because I didn't sound French. But that's not all the time. It just depends who, who you're talking to, right? It just depends. Yeah. But it, uh, I could see that in Toronto uh, they have signs, for example, in the subways in French and in English, but not in Quebec, only French. Only French. Whoa. Very true. That would be an interesting lesson, maybe, on why is Quebec or how is Quebec different from the rest of Canada? Because there's a lot of differences. Some people even feel like it's a different country, right? Yeah, but the accent is okay. pretty different. Pretty yeah. different from the know, accent is different from the French. Yeah. 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 French. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, Ke nice. the Quebec accent make me laugh when when I hear it. <laughs> yeah. So once they said "when uh, pitoyla." I said, I'm, I beg your pardon. I said, moi toi. I, said, I didn't learn like that. <laughs> but I know the difference. We, we have to respect that, of course. Yeah, yeah, sure. 
Of course, just like we sound different from where Calvin is in Scotland or England, right? Just different accents. <laughs> Let's go to paragraph three. Calvin, could you read paragraph three for us? Sure. Um, many non-English speaking countries now start to teach their children English in school at a young age. That's not only helps the children to learn English, but also to get better jobs when they are older. A country that has workers who have both English and computer skills is better able to compete in a global marketplace. Okay, so how does someone who is bilingual have maybe one app on another applicant for a job? Sorry, could you repeat? How does somebody who is bilingual have how have they one app somebody else that doesn't have another language or doesn't speak English? To they can find a job app. in the uh, English speaking country. Right, very good. What does it mean to one up? To what? be ahead. By how much? One step. Exactly. Very good. So you can write that in your books, you guys. To one up someone is to be just slightly better than maybe you have all of the same qualifications, but there's one thing on your resume that puts you above. Okay. Any questions on the vocabulary in that paragraph? Is it one like number one? Sorry. Uh, number one, one up like number one? To one, no, it's not number one. It means one more than everyone else or the other person. Ah, uh, okay. So you have one up to me, Nina, because you speak another language. You speak three languages. I speak two. So you've one up to me because you have one more than me. Great. <laughs> Do you understand? Can anyone else think of another example yes, of one asking yes, someone? Hi, Dimitri. Are you there? Dimitri, can you hear us? Okay, sorry, I have to continue. Let's continue with the next paragraph then. We could get Calvin to read that for us. You, you want me to read it again? Did you just read the last one? Yeah, I read the third paragraph. Okay, Tiago, can you read the next one then? I'm sorry. Sure. Uh, the fourth? Yes. Okay. Um, English is also the language of the Internet. Many people work in the field of Internet technology. Uh, while many others use the internet to help them do their jobs or to improve their English skills. Fantastic. Very good. Very, very good pronunciation there. So let's talk about how you use the how you use English on the internet. I want everyone to share one thing. How have you recently used English on the internet? And don't say a verb because I already know <laughs> that, okay? Calvin, let's start with you. Um. I use I use English in the on the internet every day basically because I I need to write papers and uh and I use scholarships uh no sorry as uh, Google Scholars every week um yeah I use uh use English on the internet quite a lot. Okay, very good. So you might say you use it for study for school based things, right? Yeah, sure. Awesome, very good. What about you, Dimitri? How do you use English on the internet? Igor, what about you? I read articles in English, news in English. Tell us every about day. an article you have recently read. About uh, um, crisis, crisis in crisis or crisis? Crisis. Crisis in uh, um, in Cyprus. Exactly right. We just read that together. Do you read English articles every day, Igor? Yes. Every hour, one article. <laughs> wow. That's 24 good. hours, one hour article. One article a yeah. day. <laughs> Just joking. No, I read maybe one. Uh, only uh, head of the news, and that's all. 
Excellent. That's good. To the headlines, we might call it. Yeah, the headlines. The headlines, right? Excellent. <laughs> what about you, Michaela? How do you use English on the internet or your computer? I use it in on verbling, clear. <laughs> and I use it on on forums. Forums? Yes. What if kind I want of to forums? Different kinds of forums. Music or um, how to fix it, you know? <laughs> mm hmm Fixing. Yes. Excellent, yes. very good. You can fix almost anything using the internet, right? What yes. about you what about you, Mina? Uh, no, um, not anymore. I don't use the internet anymore. Uh, to I'm uh, using English on the internet. You don't use the internet for English at all. Yeah. No, I'm talking to my uh, Arabic native. Friends, so I don't. Maybe sometimes to show up. You. Know. You don't use Facebook. So, Yes, but my friends are uh, Egyptian. They okay. talk Arabic. Sometime when I want to show off my uh, English skills, <laughs> I, uh, um, when I say something, I they don't uh, they don't understand. Well, thank you for writing on my page in English. I appreciate it. <laughs> it's, nice. it's nice to know what you're actually saying. Masif, how do you use how do you use it? I I use English to chat with the uh, Chinese sellers buying clothes from the internet. Chinese what? Uh sellers. Uh, they sell clothes. Mm -hmm. Yes, clothes or mm -hmm. uh computer hardware. That's all. So <laughs> fantastic example of using English to for business, right? Very good. Yeah. yeah, for me, I use English uh, for many reasons uh, to chat with other people uh, from other countries and also to read articles in English. Yeah, that's, uh, that's everything for now. Maybe I can Excellent. do uh, many things in the future. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. And what about you, Tiago? Um, I, I use English mainly for work, you know, um, in the company to talk to customers uh, in a private school language to teach, um, to sing as well. Mm -hmm. so, wow, many different things. You like to you use the English to sing, or sorry, you use the internet to sing in English. Yeah, yeah. How do you do that? Well, here. Uh, in Verbling, in Matthew's classes at night, he has a choral singing uh, class, so mm -hmm. we just show off, as Mina said. Very nice. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> oh my God! He, 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 got, he got incredible voice. Oh, thank you, Mina. <laughs> we Maybe I hear should start you. a really, uh, Yes, you should. I'm going to start a singing class so that I can hear everyone's lovely voices as well. well that's a good idea. I, like I feel it. left yeah. out. Do you sing I have a good voice. I love to sing, yes. And the dance a class. A dancing class. <laughs> 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 yeah, the dancing class will be administrated by Mina. Very good. <laughs> Mina, can you, can you do a, a, a dance demonstration for us? <laughs> how do you show how big you move those shoulders? Um, uh, three left, uh, three left feet. <laughs> Two, three left feet. Three, three yes. That yes. sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe you shouldn't. Maybe you shouldn't. <laughs> Very good. Okay, let's continue with our article. Okay. We have um, Monsif. Could you read the next paragraph for us? Asmol. Uh, which paragraph? Asmol. Uh, okay. As more uh, known native speakers have learned in English, words from local language have become mixed with it. For example, Spanish, a mix of Spanish and English. Uh, is now spoken in the United States and Mexico. English, uh, a mix of Hindi and uh, English, is becoming uh, more common in India. 
Very good. So let's think of words that are that are Hinglish, for example. Who can give me an example of a Hinglish word? You're going to teach me something. Shukriya, Miss Abby. Can you type that in the chat, Osama? Shukriya. That's mean thanks. Abby. It's come How from Arabic again. How is that? Is that Turkish? No, a little bit mixed uh, from Arabic. Shukriya, that's mean thanks. Shukran. Okay, so how is that? Shukriya, <laughs> <laughs> now you are laughing, I guess. <laughs> Osama was joking. <laughs> oh, he was joking. No, no, it's true. No, yeah. no, it's true. It's true. Actually, it's true. Zindigi does me a laugh, I guess. Uh, yes. But not Osama, can I ask you a question? Mary Zindigi, my life. Mary Zindigi. Osama, can I ask what? you a question? Yeah, sure. How is Shakriya Hinglish? Where is the English in it? No, it's not uh, Shakriya, Miss, and they say Shakriya and they continue in English. Okay, I understand. Yeah. yeah. Shakra means thank, and Ya means you. Okay, so, so let's it means mm -hmm. thank you. Cool. Uh, we're going to change that. I'm going to show you how to change that into a, a English word. Shocking. <laughs> Something like that. Shocking. So what, is, what does that mean again? What does chakra mean again? Chakra means think. Chakra means think. Think. And ya yeah, means you. Okay, so you can say chakra. Chakra you. That would mean thinking. Right? Yes. That would be an example. Not of thinking with your mind. Think, mean, uh, think, think. Not think. Oh, think. <laughs> think mean shock. And ya yeah, mean you. Well, it's, it's very obvious mean that I'm never mean going mean to mean learn. Mina is, expla Mina is explaining the word uh, uh, from a point of view, an Arabic speaker, but we are talking about Hindi people, so don't mix uh, the words. Okay? But shokra in Arabic, uh, shokra in Arabic means think. Yeah, we know yeah. that, but we are talking about Hindi word. I, I am you know Indian. Hindi. I'm originally from India. Really? <laughs> hey guys, I'm, yes. I'm just a bit confused now. I'm a little confused as well, McKinley. <laughs> Let's continue. McKinley, can you read the it. second to last paragraph? Sorry, can you read it, please? Can you read the second to last paragraph for us, McKinley? Yes. Thank you. In fact, some experts think that people could one day speak one kind of English at home, another at work or school, and a third while traveling or talking to international visitors. Other experts believe that countries should encourage local version of English. Okay, versions of English. What does that mean, versions of English? Mm, means, for example, uh, dialects of English. Sorry, McKaylee, what was that? For example, Australian English, American English, Canadian English. Yeah, dialects. African. Yes. Calvin, tell us about the version of English that you hear where you live. Calvin. Sorry, I, I, I was muted. That's okay. Tell us about the version of English that you experience where you live. Well, I live in, I live in Scotland, so mm -hmm. uh, it's part of the UK, it's part of the United Kingdom. But so in the UK, they basically have Irish English, English English, Scottish English. Uh, yeah, but, but uh, there are also a lot of dialects in um, in the UK as well, mm -hmm. uh, like a Cockney, is, is good, yeah. it's kind of a London accent. Um, they have Maitland, Maitland accent as well. Uh, they also have Newcastle, uh, Liverpool accent, Newcastle, uh, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, there's sometimes like with the country like England, you could have each little city, and they've got their individual. Dialect, yeah, yeah. English people. Yeah, English people are so obsessed with 
with the accents. They they they, they li literally have like over one hundred accents existing in this country, and it's a small island. <laughs> And, and then you've got Australia, New Zealand, right? Yeah. yeah. Andy, are you there? Andy. Hi, Amy. How are you? I'm good. How are you today? I'm fine, sir. It's good to see you. Thank what you. versions of English do you find most difficult to understand? Uh -huh. <laughs> many difficult. Many, many accents, actually. Maybe the native speaker, native speakers are very difficult to me because we are used to uh, learn English with uh, a special dialect, special accent in our schools in Egypt. Mm -hmm. It is completely different than the the um, the native uh, accent. Right. Yeah. So it's in in our country, in Egypt. It's very difficult and it's very strange yeah. also. Even the native speakers couldn't understand it. Okay, so there you go. That would be really difficult to understand, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. Because in our schools, we learn English from non-native speakers. So when we want to uh, listen to a, a native material, so we have uh, big problems to understand yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That can be really challenging because they might say things that maybe a native English speaker wouldn't actually say, right? Very yeah. good. Then there's Absolutely. even differences between South, like Southern America and Central Northern America, right? Not South America, but the Southern United States, right? Who knows how they speak? Who can, who can imitate that accent? <laughs> no. Nobody? You can. <laughs> I can, but I'm not going to. <laughs> Why not? Ch teacher, can, can you uh, can you speak the the accent of uh, American black people? No. Do I look black? <laughs> Anybody no, the black, the black people because <laughs> they have special <laughs> accents. Black. Oh no, you didn't. Osama. Yo, yo, bro. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, man. For my life. You are I my dog. Only they can do that. Only they can <laughs> do that, right? Okay, let's continue with our last paragraph and then we can fully open up the discussion. Who would like to read the last paragraph? Okay, I'm going to read it. Go ahead, Calvin. Some native English speakers are upset at these changes changes however they will have to adapt to them because the globalization of english has become a fact of life the highly lucrative english is as a second language teaching industry and the demand for native english speakers will continue to grow for some time to come so what do you think will i be out of a job very soon what's that will I Will I would will I be out of a job very soon? Oh no! I mean, um, you are you are a native English speaker, and uh, and you are pretty good at teaching. I mean, there's no reason for you to to out of a job to be out of a job. So according to this paragraph that you see here, to be out of something means to lack it, right? So what kind of teachers will be in high demand? Native. Native English speakers. That's the idea, right? Somebody who speaks it as a first language. Very good. And what will native English speakers have to get used to? What is something that I will have to accept and adjust to? To some uh, different versions of English. Exactly. That's it, Calvin. Different versions, right? So trying to um, be adaptive, right? Being able to accept different things. Tiago, what kind of role do you think culture plays in that? Um, I don't know. There are uh, some things, depending on the place you are, that mm -hmm. you should respect. But sometimes it just does. You don't feel like that, you know. You know, you have to respect it. But uh, it's pretty difficult. And um, if I say an example, I might be. Um, I might harm someone here, so uh, I'm not going to say anything. Anything, but uh, these kind of things. 
things. For example, there are some people that they don't, you, you're not supposed to touch them with your left hand, right? Because uh, that's the hand, you should do your personal hygienic stuffs, something like Where that. Where is this? What? I'm, I'm a little bit lost. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not <laughs> supposed to say anything, Abby. <laughs> okay, okay, I understand. Right, so, but yeah. And it's very cultural. If, you, if you're not aware of that, so you okay, might cool. commit a mistake. I see. Now I understand what you're saying, how culture can change that. Very good. So thinking about that then, um, different countries trying to learn English, maybe teaching it to their children, putting them in English immersion schools. How can this obsession with learning English affect the native language of a country? What can happen eventually? Michaela, what do you think? I think that we, that we learn English because we need it. But I think that we should respect our language. For example, in Italy, a lot of people love to mix Italian and English. And they, they didn't use the exact Italian word. But they use, uh, for example, an English word mm. in that case. Exactly. For example, That's what we're for, talking about. Yes. For example, the word decoder. In Italy, we have one, and it is decodificatore. I think that when we when we talk with English or with international people, we should use English. But when we are in Italy and we are talking between Italians, we should use Italian because we are Italian. Very good. Yeah. So that's. I would, I would agree with that. I think that it's important to preserve your mother tongue. Any other opinions on that? Andy, what do you think? How can this uh, obsession with English affect the way a native language is used? Um, just a uh, comment for uh, my colleague who just finished his speech. Ma Michelle, you are Itali uh, Italian? Italian? It's yes, I'm Italian. Italian. Yeah, yeah. The Italian people uh, think that the whole world should speak Italian. I am dealing with many <laughs> Italian company. <laughs> okay, <laughs> they insist every time to write the invoice fatura, as you said, in Italian. <laughs> Please, I don't and uh, speak Italian. Just, uh, <laughs> just uh, write it by English, so I can understand. The other people can understand, them. <laughs> but every time they insist to write in Italian. It's true, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> Even when, uh, while I'm talking to him through the phone, he, most of his speech in Italian. I, I don't get it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Abby, what's your uh, question again? <laughs> okay, um, that's okay. We're going to move on to the next question. Yeah. Okay. Besides business and technology, what other industries function in English? Besides business, besides technology, what other businesses Tourism. function in Tourism. English? Tourism industry. Tourism, awesome. Mm -hmm. Study. Study. Education. Education, very good. Someone said healthcare in the Seeing. chat, Amit. How do you think um, knowing English as a second language would help you if you were, say, a doctor or something like that? How would that help you? How could you one up the other doctors in your country? You would be able to go to courses uh, to doctors, so you will be more performant in your job. Excellent. Very every good. job, not only doctor, but in. Uh, all jobs, kind of jobs, if you want. Excellent, yeah, so there's one thing. How could you one-up somebody who has maybe the same um, trade or same profession as you? How might you one-up them? Do you guys remember what that term means, to one-up? Yeah. Say it again. Does anyone remember? How might you one-up? Somebody else that has your same profession, how could you one-up them? You one-up by knowing English, knowing other languages. Very good. Always being just one step ahead, right? Yes. Yes. Very good. Excellent job, you guys. And number nine, 
on page two, if you look, discuss it. What's your teacher? Teacher, I have a question. Okay, go ahead. Uh, don't you think that the the spread of English in the world and uh, English as a second language in other countries is a bad effect on uh, native American uh, native speakers of English because they became uh, lazy to learn other languages so they yeah. go to internet and they see all people speak their language English so they become lazy to to learn other languages I yeah, agree with them, I think that's yeah. true yeah. Who else agrees with Osama? Who thinks that that could be true? I do not agree. No. Why not? No, because who wants to learn? To learn Spanish. Who wants to learn languages will learn languages and other languages. Who do not want, they will do not want uh, to learn languages. So, uh, I know many Americans, uh, people from the United States, they learn um, another languages. I think that's true. Because I, like me for example, if I didn't want to learn French, so I didn't learn French, but I did want to learn Spanish, so I learned it, right? So I think it depends too on the person, everybody's different, right? But I do think Osama has a point, because he was saying it can mean that for somebody. It can mean that maybe they're lazy and expect that somebody else should be able to speak. Yeah, I don't, I don't mean that all the native speakers uh, are lazy. Some of them. <laughs> Very good. In every culture exists uh, lazy people. In every uh, country. So yeah, it's no, nothing but normal. The, Statistically yeah. normal. No, no, but in the native speakers' countries is a, is a special thing. So it's not like other countries. Okay, okay. Yes, very because good. English is. Uh, it's very spread in the world, uh, okay, more okay. than other, more other than, than other languages. Mina, what are you saying? <laughs> Mina. Mina, do you think I'm lazy? <laughs> no, you're learning Spanish, and you want to, to learn Arabic. <gasps> wow, do. teacher, you do you want to learn Arabic? Yes, but I never will. <laughs> yes. But I, I, I can't teach you. I can't be your teacher. No, it won't work. <laughs> I, I feel that Arabic is way over my head. I think I will never learn it. So no, I you're just native speaker says. Yeah. Sorry. All, t all native speakers say Arabic is uh, way too far. You know. Yeah. It's so like Chinese. Same thing, Calvin. I'll never learn Chinese. I'm very sorry. I just can't do it. <laughs> you can. No. No, Arabic, is the, Arabic is the most difficult language in the world. Yeah. All, not, all the people say that because if you want to spell a word, there is different way to spell it. You know, uh, I am happy that you say it every time, but uh, in, Morocco, in Arabic language, uh, happy, you have to say it different way. That depend on the people and the person you are talking with him all the time. That's different, little bit complicated. But if you want to learn it, you can do it. I guess. <laughs> Nicely yeah. done. Really good work, yeah. you guys, in today's class. Um, each of you shared some really interesting points. Calvin, I'm really impressed at your level of vocabulary in English. You're doing a very good job. Thanks. You're one of my newer students in here, and I thought you did a fantastic job with that. Um, and everyone else, really good reading, fantastic comprehension, and I liked one thing in specific was our conversation about your opinions regarding whether or not English should be taught in your native countries and how that can be different. So excellent work, everyone. Very good. Are there any questions before we close? No. Keep the good work. Okay. <laughs> I will do my best. I have You a have class. another class? Yep. Next hour we're going to be doing um, Girls Night Out. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> so that's my, that's my cheap effort to get girls in the classroom, but I don't think it's going to work. <laughs> no, it's a class about um, idioms. We're going to continue the story about John and Amy, so feel free to join if you can, okay? <laughs>
Okay. 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 See you guys later. Thank you for your hard work today. And if I see you next hour, I see you next hour.